let's just get people caught up on you. Uh, I don't want to know the whole story since you left here, but what are you doing now that uh, that everybody needs to know about? I'm doing a lot of sports betting analysis for places like MLB Network, NBA TV, Fanatic Sportsbook also, which is coming to North Carolina, by the way. I have started Fanatic Sportsbook, helping them to show all the content that we can help people make educated bets and also bring people over there. When you heard North Carolina was going to legalize sports gambling, what was your first thoughts? As excited as I was for New York to get it is as excited as I am for North Carolina. The only thing I was worried about, because a year or two ago, there was some issues. A lot of these states don't allow for you to bet on your in-state college teams. New York, New Jersey, prime examples. Can't bet on Syracuse in New York. Can't bet on Rutgers in New Jersey. I was worried that North Carolina would have to adopt that in order to get sports betting. Here's the thing. In New York... No one really cares about college sports the way that they do in North Carolina. So you needed to be able to bet on ECU, UNC, Duke, NC State, et cetera. And you will. Yeah. So that, so that and it's funny that it's starting ACC tournament week. So let's get people who don't know much about sports gambling educated on sports gambling. So a lot of people think it's just bet on your team to win. Just to talk about how simple or complex sports gambling is it's complex it's a different language i'd say if you try to speak spanish like i tried to minor in it in college i, I didn't become fluent because i didn't immerse myself in it and moved to spain for a semester you have to immerse yourself in sports betting in order to really learn the lingo yes you could bet on teams to just win a game there are other smart ways to bet like betting the spread or the total so the spread means that if you could bet on a team that loses, but they just don't lose by a large margin. The spread is basically win-loss margin. Totals are how many points are going to be scored or how many runs are going to be scored or goals in a game. And you could bet over or under the number that's provided. You don't set the line yourself. The sports book does. You decide based on what number the sports book gives you how you want to bet it. So there are a lot of different ways to bet. I always say the easiest way, if you've never done it before, just to kind of get your feet wet, player props. That's where you can go and bet on, let's say, Joel Embiid of the Sixers, who's hurt right now, but you could bet over on his rebounds or under on his rebounds. A lot of people have played fantasy sports for a long time, whether it's season long, daily fantasy, a lot of people understand more on the player prop side when they're first getting started with betting because it's a lot more similar to fantasy sports. Let's start with simple stuff like reading a spread. Okay, so I want to bet on the Tar Heels in the in the ACC tournament, and they're plus or minus something. Explain those numbers to me so I know what I'm betting on. Let's say we have a UNC Duke game. UNC, say, is favored by three points, which means if you see the minus next to a team, they're the favorites. If you see the plus next to their name, they're an underdog. UNC minus three means North Carolina has to win by four points or more in order for you to win your bet. On the other side, you could have Duke at plus three, meaning they're an underdog. If you take Duke plus three, Duke could still lose the game. As long as they only lose by one or two points, then you're going to win your bet. You just have to make sure to look at it that way. A lot of people will do emotional gambling. They'll just bet on their team because that's their favorite. What's your advice when people want to start getting into this and trying to take the emotion out of making those picks? Think back to being in your math class and knowing that when you did algebra, you had to find X. It's all about numbers. I know so many very good bettors in Las Vegas who can't name you more than two players on a team. They just bet the numbers. So just know that because you may think you know your team so well, make sure to go through the numbers first and see if the matchup works. People like to bet because a team is good. You have to look at the matchup, just like any player who's going into a game. If you're going to watch the Carolina Panthers on a Sunday, the Panthers aren't just looking at their own tape. They're looking at the tape of their opponent. You need to look at the tape of their opponent. You need to look at the numbers for the opponent, see how the matchup works before you go and bet. You're going to get places like Fanatics Sportsbook where Fanatics, they're going to match your page 
to what you like to bet a lot of. So if you like to bet your own team, they're going to keep throwing those bets at you. But just make sure that you're looking at the other side, too. So what's your advice for people who want to delve into this? You had to learn all this yourself, too. When <laughs> yeah. you first started placing some bets, what's your advice on how to go about learning the betting process here early on as this thing kicks off? A lot of trial and error. See what you're good at. See what you might not be as strong at. Then start looking for advice from other people. Now, the way I got into it, I was looking at a lot of these podcasts, listening to a lot of people a lot smarter than me. I was listening to two podcasts a day of very smart people out in Las Vegas. Trust me, those podcasts were not entertainment, but they were very like knowledgeable of the sports betting world. I learned what people looked at in order to think more like, a smart and sharp better, as we like to call them, as opposed to just the average Joe, I would stay away from betting these 10 leg parlays where you throw 10 different bets into one bet and hope that you hit this massive payout for $10 that you paid and the payout will be like 3000. You're not going to hit those. I would say if you want to parlay, because I know people think they're fun, three we call them legs. So three bets in that one parlay maximum. Don't go and bet these 10 different things. And try to stay small too. Don't bet a million things in one day. Look for two to three bets to make that you feel are you're really strong, like are passionate about. Then see which sports you're good at. Sometimes you're better at other sports than let's say you like betting on the NFL. You might be better at that than betting the NBA, and that's okay, but you'll learn that through time. All right, let's go so, over some betting terms here. You already talked about parlay. Just tell people what, it, what is a parlay. A parlay is when you take a lot of different bets. So let's say I like UNC, Duke, and NC State to win their basketball games tonight. You could take all three of those games and just pick them all three to win, and you will get a bigger payout than you would. So let's say I bet, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but let's just say you bet $10 on all three teams in the triangle to win. Let's say $10 on the three of them to win the game makes you 400 bucks if all three win. But now if you want to just bet on UNC to win, they might be a heavy favorite tonight. So then you wouldn't really get 10 bucks might only make you $4 instead of 400, which is the allure of a parlay because the more teams that you pick to win and throw into a parlay, then the bigger the payout. Again, though, they all have to win. So picking a winner in a lot of different games is very difficult. All right, let's do some other term. What other terms do, do betters, novice betters need to know going into this gambling thing? Spread, which we talked about. Total, which we also talked about. Those are big. Money line is just for a team to win the game outright. Um, player props is when you just bet individual players to go over their points or under their rebounds or over assists. Um, those would be, I would say, the key things aside for the ones that we already discussed. All right. You are known as the prop queen because mm -hmm. of prop bets, right? Uh, tell me what you look for when you're looking for prop bets, if you if you go that avenue, which seems to be your expertise. The one that got the prop queen name was strikeout props in Major League Baseball, where you could bet over or under how many strikeouts a starting pitcher is going to have in a game. I have a whole routine for finding that. Um, you also can bet on certain, in, like there are very unique markets. I do a lot of NBA betting. In the NBA, you could combine props. You could get rebounds plus assists, combining that category for players that, like a Nikola Jokic, who's really good at dishing the ball out and grabbing boards. You can combine points, rebounds, and assists. In hockey, for the Carolina Hurricanes, let's say, you can do shot attempts. Shots on goal, or um, you could do all these different kind of goalie props. There is such a large menu on these sports books for you to go bet these individual players, and that also makes it fun on any given night. And there's in-game bets you can do too, right? Bet on a half, bet on a quarter, bet. Yeah. There are all sorts of in-game stuff going on too, right? The other night, I hit two first half bets in the NBA. You could bet by quarter. There are certain NFL teams. I did this with the Ravens a few years ago. The Ravens always scored first, and then they were terrible in the second half. So you get a live number 
after, let's say the Ravens scored a touchdown. I remember it was against the Bills a few years ago. Ravens scored a touchdown, so the line was Ravens minus three. Then it went to Ravens minus seven when they scored first. I went and took Bills plus seven on the other side because I knew the Ravens weren't going to play a good second half, and it would have ended up a closer game. As each of these games go on, the numbers are always moving on the sports book. I always say the stock market closes. The sports book doesn't. The sports book is open the entire game. You could keep looking. And there are some teams and some sports, especially tennis. Tennis live betting is the most profitable way to bet, to be honest. I don't do it very often because I don't know it very well. But I have friends that do. And you just go through a match. Like, you could get Djokovic. If he gets down two sets to nothing, you could go and get him on the other side and say, no, now it's a better number since, you know, let's say Djokovic was a heavy favorite. He might not be as heavy of a favorite live after losing the first two sets. What is a success rate? Because you're not going to win all your bets. How do you know if you're being successful or not gambling? 52% or more. If you're hitting at 52% or more, then these sharp bettors in Vegas think that you are awesome. That's what always that line is. I also, if you aren't going to, odds are you're probably not going to track a lot of your bets because you don't do this for a living and you do it for fun. When you're not putting money into your sports book account each week, that's usually a good sign. <laughs> um, how much should people bet? Like some people will always bet the same number every time. Should people be betting more or less when they're hot, they're cold? How much should people be betting, do you think? I always say pick a number that you're comfortable with losing. Be not a number that's going to ruin your day, a number you're comfortable with losing. Anywhere up to $100, I say, for depending on how much money you have, is a good number to start. People will bet $10. People will bet $50. Then there's like the math behind it that I'm not going to get into. So you could just, I, I got in trouble by a friend of mine a few years ago for just betting $50 on something minus 110, but you should be betting $55 on minus 110 because it like gets, I'm not getting into it. Yeah, it's too it. confusing, but just, um, I would say anywhere up to a hundred dollars to start. If you're really just starting and never bet before, then go $25, 20 bucks, just see what you're good at. Um, but yeah, anything past a hundred, you start to probably get a little bit nervous. When people ask me, you know, what they should do for gambling, I say, go follow Ariel Epstein or some other people. If you're, if you don't want to do the research yourself, who besides yourself, do you recommend maybe you should follow to get good advice or who, who are solid gamblers who give you good advice? I have a lot of friends who have been Vegas people for a long time. Uh, my friend Kelly in Vegas is what her name is. She has been doing this a long time. She has a lot of college sports, so she's a great follow. My friend CT Betts, he does a lot of college sports. He's a great follow. Um, Crack Wins or Bill Krakenberger, he also, he's one of the people I was mentioning who is in Las Vegas who can't name you two players on a team, but he's a millionaire from sports betting. There are so many names of people that I trust, but I there is the thing that's good about the way sports betting has gone, the, it used to be very hard to find bets online for trustworthy people because they used to sell their picks, which was kind of like seedy and shady. Yeah. But now that we have the sports media world embracing it, I always say to people, find the people that give you information along with their bets, not just people that post to social media the bets they're giving out, like ECU tonight, UNC tonight. I look to the people that post videos or have podcasts or shows where they're actually explaining. The best the best compliment I got, I remember I was giving out a bet for Jonas Valanciunas of the Pelicans to go over his rebounds plus assists, and the explanation I gave the viewer said, actually, because of your explanation, I only took his over on assists. And the irony was he hit and I didn't. So I said, you know what? Good for you. You took my advice and you made your own educated bet. I think one of the things I like about you is you're accountable. You post whether you won or lost your bets, right? I, I think Correct. that's kind of the, the honesty there of, of when you're doing well is, is a big part of it. So, um, so how do people follow you? Uh, on all of your social media accounts so they know how to get good gambling advice. 
Make sure to go on X to Ariel Epstein and Instagram, Ari Epps. And I'm trying to do the TikTok thing, which is at <laughs> Ari Epps as well. So I post all my pics to there too. All right, but you don't post your gambling tips on your Facebook yet. No, I haven't used my Facebook since WCTI. <laughs> I, I only wanted to beat you in followers. And since that didn't happen, I decided to go to some other social yeah. media apps. Right. And I beat you on the other one. Oh, all of them. You smoked me. It's not even been close. So... <laughs> So that's good. All right. Any downside to all of this that with gambling starting in, in North Carolina? Is there a downside? I know this is your life now. Uh, what kind of caution will you offer people as to maybe why they may not want to do this? Of course, there's the addictive personalities and anyone could be addicted to anything, but they're not going to close liquor stores because people are alcoholics. So you just have to be really careful about making sure you're not one of those people that is going to go and spend all their money on sports betting it is so convenient to be able to take your phone i could just place a bet whenever i want and because we have it at our fingertips and you don't have to go to a sports book it can be something very addictive it can be something where people can just decide to you know put their money into the account because it looks in, it's like invisible money like a credit card all you do is on the account you hit deposit and it goes right in from your bank it's all very easy and at the tip of your fingertips but you got to make sure you don't have one of those personalities that's going to lose all your money gamblers always like to talk about their wins never their losses do you have a win that you're so proud of that you always uh, brag about the Atlanta Braves to win the World Series at 10 to 1, the year that Ronald Acuna went down. I bet it in the preseason. I wish I bet it again after Acuna went down because it was a much larger payout. But that was one of my favorites, just the team that you never thought was going to actually win the World Series once an essentially MVP went down. And um, they did. So 10 to 1 for the Braves to win the World Series was awesome. Right. You never want to talk about your losses. Is there one that you wish you had back? Yes. I had another on in a Super Bowl a hundred to one. So I had a pretty nice payout there if it would have hit the Bucks linebacker Devin White to win MVP. And it was done before Von Miller won when Peyton Manning was quarterback in Denver. I thought Tom Brady was like the older, like a Peyton Manning may not have a good Super Bowl, which I didn't think Tom Brady had a good Super Bowl that year. He almost had three turnovers and the refs called them all back. And Tom Brady still won MVP, but Devin White had at least 10 total tackles in every playoff game, and he had the game ceiling interception in the Super Bowl. 100 to 1, Devin White should have won that MVP. Yeah. All right. And how much do you use your Eastern North Carolina knowledge when you're gambling, when you're talking about players and teams you used to cover? All the time. Whenever I see Bam Adebayo, I freak out. I think it's so cool. I'm Brandon Ingram. Um, a lot of people ask about Ingram, but the Pelicans are a really hard team to bet player props on because it's him, McCollum, Balanchunas, like any given night. Um, and then you got college baseball that you could bet on. So I've used that. Um, yeah, so there have been a lot of different times in Eastern North Carolina where a lot of these players who I just know have like, and you know, if Brandon Ingram's playing the Lakers, that he's probably going to try to have a good game so there. And not that I have inside information into any of these people, because that would be illegal. But I do have certain soft spots for people because of their rise. I actually did um, last year when former ECU pitcher Gavin Williams got called up. And I was really excited because I could bet strikeout props on Gavin Williams, who I've watched since he came out of the bullpen for the first time as a freshman throwing 100 miles an hour for ECU. And they didn't go over his strikeout prop. And I felt really bad because I was giving it out and all of Pirate Nation was really excited to take it. So I stopped betting Gavin Williams props. <laughs> the emotional side of gambling, that'll always be the downfall. Yep, right? that's where it got me. But here's the thing. If you do the emotional side of betting and you realize the first time it loses, don't go back to it. <laughs> Ariel right. Epstein, the prop queen. Thank you so much for giving us all these gambling tips uh, for North Carolinians. We're going to venture into this world. Thank you.